Texas's Hurricane Harvey recorded a 13 trillion gallon water flood that ended at the Gulf of Mexico. This plume of water consequently threatened many of the sensitive coral reef species along the Gulf. These coral reefs are very important because they are responsible for $375 billion in economic value and provide food and resources for over 500 million people in 94 different countries. Since they only populate 2% of the ocean, they are extremely valuable to ocean biodiversity. Hurricane Harvey has reduced the ocean salinity levels across 100 miles of the shore and the effects are shown through buoys stationed off the coast that send spontaneous water quality reports. This system of buoys reported a 10% drop of salinity on September 28th. This displacement has affected many populations of marine coral reefs. This issue can be an even bigger problem for areas where hurricanes will occur in the future and even more damage can be done unless solutions are put into action to prevent categorical destruction to ocean life. Solutions have already been enacted where organizations study reefs measuring samples of water, microbes, and sediments in the reefs. One assistant professor of biosciences, Correa, says she hopes the flood water goes southwest, away from the sensitive coral reefs along the Gulf. Drainage systems installed between the Gulf of Mexico and Texas have stopped the possibility of any more extensive damage to coral reefs. Proper draining methods can use comprehensive flood barriers and big storm drains to minimize the raging waters that can reach coral reefs. Many countries have already applied knowledge of hurricanes to create solutions. In 2006, Japan was able to complete a massive anti-flood system built to sustain storms, intense rain, and even hurricanes. Awareness is the biggest factor to enact ideas that can reduce future damage done to marine life from hurricanes. Another aspect of damage from extreme weather can be seen in the aftermath of the Japanese tsunami. The 2011 event devastated Japan is now devastating ecosystems halfway around the world. Debris from the destroyed infrastructure was pulled back into the ocean when the tsunami receded. The debris then turned into a shelter for Japanese native aquatic species. This shelter then served as a transportation device for the now invasive species as they were carried by the oceanic currents across the Pacific Ocean through rougher waters that the species would normally not be able to survive in. Those non-native species have already shown signs of colonization in foreign environments and the Hawaiian coastal eco ecosystem are now facing a new dangerous threat from foreign invaders. This issue is not just detrimental to the species whose habitat is being invaded, but this issue is also threatening to groups of people who rely on those coastal e ecosystems for survival. For groups of people, this ecosystem represents their economy and their way of life. This issue is incredibly important to address because the colonization is not yet complete for these invasive species, so the damage is still salvageable and possibly reversible. The most promising solution to this problem includes the implementation of building materials that would prevent the harboring of invasive species for future earthquakes. This solution can oftentimes be unrealistic from a financial standpoint due to the large cost of entire structural overhaul, but the damages future scenarios could cause along with the current situation warrants a response to that level. So instead of a great expense, this solution should be looked at as a necessary investment for the future. Toxic waste pollution and sewage were mixed in with floodwaters within days after the events of Texas's Hurricane Harvey, contaminating many freshwater rivers such as the San Jacinto River. 36 industrial facilities in Houston reported toxic chemical spills within a week of Harvey ravaging the city. Industrial facilities implementing toxic chemicals contribute to the disasters caused by hurricanes. These facilities are under scrutiny after the use of these chemicals and their lack of concern for the health, ha the health hazards in local communities. Many industrial companies have buried their head not willing to work on safety protocols to defend against toxic chemical spills due to increased storm intensity. Industries have continued to ignore the hazards of waste spillage even after scientists have attributed many negative effects such as lack of fertility. Benzene, a chemical often used in manufacturing, attacks the blood and hinders the body's ability to produce red blood cells, which can lead to diseases such as anemia and leukemia. In Texas, storage tanks holding crude oil, gasoline, and toxic contaminants failed when stormwater from Harvey caused them to collapse, spilling at least 145,000 gallons of fuel. Drastic spills, like the one seen in Texas, negatively affect the communities in the area and cause irreparable damage and health hazards to people in those communities, even after the rehabilitation of their properties. 
Organizations such as Earth Justice and the EPA have pushed political leaders to crack down on industries that implement toxic chemicals in production in hopes of minimizing the damage caused by these chemicals. These agencies are pushing for reform in the storage and management of these chemicals through new protocol preventing storage of chemicals near large bodies of water or estuaries. These are just some of the steps organizations have taken to prevent chemical spills due to intense natural disasters.